head men's Hello, basketball Jim. coach Rick Barnes, media day press conference. And uh, please raise your hands for questions. Coach will start off with questions. Grant? You kind of got a grasp on the identity of this team, how far away they haven't shown that already. I don't know if I've got a grasp other than the fact that I think that they've, uh, it's been a fun team to, to be around, fun team to coach, and the fact that they're working in the direction that we want to go, and, and uh, but we're still, we've got a lot of young guys that still are learning the details of some things and the importance of certain things, but their attitudes have been terrific, and uh, we need to get everybody as healthy as we can before we get into it, And but uh, it's been a fun group to be with, and. I just think it's going to be a group that's going to continue to get better as the year goes on. Steve and Jimmy. What's the biggest difference you've seen in Lamonte now versus maybe a year ago, even two years ago? And what do you want from him this season? What do you want to see him? I think, I think probably the biggest difference, and I believe that any of our coaches were here that would talk about his everyday preparation, trying to make every day a, a, a good day in terms of his focus in practice and not only – concerned about himself, but thinking a lot about his teammates. No, he knows that it's uh, our team will obviously have a different dynamic, but he also understands how he's got to be a leader, a positive leader. And uh, I, don't, I don't think he is wrapped up in himself at all. I think he's totally concerned with what he can do to help each individual become a better player. And I know how much he wants to win. And he, he is as competitive as any player that we've coached since we've been here. But uh, his, his, really his single day approach uh, for practice and how hard he tries to, to bring it every day has really been impressive. Jimmy, then Corey. Rick, you're losing a lot of his points, uh, rebounds, and defense. How do you make up for that? Well, we, we do feel we've got some inside guys that have the ability to score, but I think we go back to where, you know, a couple of years ago, with I said the same thing about Grant Williams and some other guys. and. And it does take them time to understand how they've got to play in, in tight space and can't mess with the ball in, in certain areas on the court. But it's up to us as a coaching staff to continue to work at putting those guys in those situations because we, we do. We, we do think we've got guys that can score. we just got to get them in the right place. And, and we've got to be patient with them to give them a chance. To, they're going to make some mistakes early by probably being in too big a hurry. Uh, we do think that we've got post guys that, that do a really nice job of, of handling, handling the ball and can pass out of the uh, traps if that's what happens. But the biggest thing is just to get them to understand how uh, they've got to be able to operate in tight spaces. Corey, then Rob. I know a lot of new faces on this team this year, but how excited do you get this time of the year just getting to see your team get back out on the court, chemistry they can build, and all the new faces in this year? Well, it's always exciting to, you know, when you get going, because especially if you've got a group of guys that, that you enjoy being around. And I can tell you as a coaching staff, we enjoy these guys because they've proven to us uh, starting back uh, at the end of last year and then when the new guys came in, the way they really took these young guys under their wings and really tried to teach them uh, what it's going to be like, the, the way that we try to do things here. And that's been a fun part to see our older guys really – help these younger guys and, and the younger guys embrace it. And so that part of it has been fun. And then once you get going with the season, now you're trying to put it together. A lot of things that you continue to try to clean up, little detailed things that they probably, the younger players don't quite understand yet, but that's part of it when you start over with, with certain players. But it's been a, it's been a good group. They, they do want it. They do want it. They, they do want to be a good basketball team. They, they do want to learn. Uh, and I think they really like each other, which is a big thing. Coach, how are you confused with Josiah? He's got to do a lot of different things. He's You know, Rob, I think what you just said in any and every way that he can, that uh, we have to, because he's the kind of player that I do think he's very versatile. I think he's a, a very unselfish person that's willing to do whatever you ask him to do, what uh, his teammates need him to do. And But I think we'll use him every way that you can possibly think about using a guy, you know, because he's that versatile that uh, playing the point, playing off the ball, doing whatever. He's going to make uh, – he's always going to try to make winning plays. He loves to pass the ball, maybe to a fault right now. That's something that we're trying to get him to understand. He, 
he needs to look for his shot a little bit more than he than he has done. But his instincts are have always been, you know, what can I do to run the team and get my teammates in places where they can score and make them better, which is a great trait for anybody that's going to can, that can be a lead guard. And but uh, we do think that he's got to get a little bit more of a scoring mentality. Marshall and Vincent Zach. Rick, when you lose so much talent, so many starters to the NBA. Can fans expect the same style of play with a whole new crop of guys? Or when you get these new guys in, do you change the way that some of these guys play? Well, I think they, they will see the base package of what we do and the things that we believe in. But uh, I think every year, and even throughout the year, you start tweaking things, you start changing things. I mean, you go into every year with a thought process as a coach and staff, how you want the team to play and what you think they need to do. But you also you go into it by not putting players in boxes where because they might start surprising you with some things. So we actually throw some things out there that we're not sure we're going to use or not use, but uh, sometimes they might make us do some things that we didn't think that we was planning on doing early. And uh, so players have a lot to do with your style of play, and but we have done things. We will be different in some areas. There's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, I think some of the things that we do on offense will be a little bit different, but yet you'll see a lot of the same base package that we use. Defensively, we you have to work hard with young players to get them to understand uh, the team concepts that you're, you're putting in, whether it's ball screen defense, your help side defense, whatever it may be. We want to be a team that's hard to guard on the offensive end. We want to be a team that uh, you, have to, you have to prepare for, and it's a difficult job to prepare for us. And, but we also know that uh, the key is our players make all that really work. And so we do spend a lot of time trying to figure out everything that our guys can do and uh, individually, but try to build on that. And uh, going back to the question about inside, you know, we've got some guys that we think that can score, but we know that we've got to every day spend time to help them grow because a lot of them have scored in different ways. And uh, that I don't think that some of that can happen here uh, or in college basketball. And so we're just, again, trying to look at each one of them. And, and uh, they might make us change our offense or our defense but by what they do. And, and we hope that happens, to be quite frank. Vince, Zach, Joe Retro. Can you talk about the background in recruiting and also the signing of Libya and what the early returns you've seen from him? Well, the, the way that started, we, we knew a year ago that, you know, the, uh, the possibility to lose guys early. I mean, it's real every year. You've got to be prepared for what's, you know, you, you know you're living today, but you also have, have to have that plan, you know, what, what can happen, the what ifs. And uh, we, we knew uh, as the season went on last year that we, we'd like to add a you know, a couple front court players. And Kim English uh, at the time was at Colorado, and, you know, he and Mike Schwartz had worked together and are terrific friends. And uh, Kim had called uh, Mike and said that he had saw uh, a young man play, and he said he's a terrific offensive rebounder and there's somebody that you guys should look at. And Coach Schwartz jumped on it. And uh, from that point, uh, from the first time that he laid eyes on him, he said, this is who we want. And uh, so we, you know, the staff worked hard trying to get him here, and we're excited about him. You know, he's uh, he, he, he's t he's talented. Uh, again, one of those players that's learning that it's a different game, uh, learning that uh, he does have the ability to score, but he's having that, like all players, uh, simply learn how to get down lower, fight for his space on the floor, and not just he can't just go walk over and, and get where he probably could a year ago. He's going to have to really fight for it because he's playing against a guy like Eve Pons every day is going to fight him for every step. And, uh, but uh, he's, he's improved a lot. I, all of our guys have improved, but he, but he really has figured out that uh, the fact that he wants to be a good player. And he knows that he's got to add some things to what he's doing right now, which all players do. But it takes some of them longer than others to figure that out. And, and he's figured out early what we need him to do. Now, they all come in with the idea of what they want to do and it's part of coaching is that you've got to get them to understand what you need them to do and while they're doing that that they continue to build uh, to stretch their game and and, and grow but uh, he's starting to really understand what we need from him. Rick, bringing him on the staff, what went into that decision and what have you seen from him since uh, last, the 
end of last year. April. Who, what, what was that? I'm sorry, I didn't. Bringing Tim English on the staff, what went into that decision? What did you see from him? Well, I've always thought that when you when you you have a staff, I think the coaches have to all be involved in it, and uh, I have always wanted to have people on our staff that either I uh, guys have played for me, guys that I really personally know, guys that guys on my staff really have a, I mean, not just a, a relationship, but somebody they really know, because I, I don't think you want to experiment with chemistry and all that stuff. I think it's important that. Just like recruiting, you've got to you've got to dig into that. But I've always relied on our coaches because they spend more time together than probably with me on a daily basis with everything. But uh, Kim has added a lot. I mean, he's, he's young, he's energetic, uh, can still play, and uh, I think the fact that he's made such a great, uh, you know, really a mm, a quick impact with our players. They trust him, which is really really important. I think they respect where he has been, what he has done. But I think more than anything, like our staff, uh, we're very much a hands-on staff. We love being with our guys. We practice is over every day. You know, we have we have dinner in, in our locker room, and as a staff, we're there with them because we we, we really enjoy being around these guys. But uh, I'm I'm excited about our staff. But he's been he has been a great addition. He's been everything that you would want and more. Joe and then Lewis and Wes. I wonder about Josiah. How does his feel right now for the point guard position? How much work has gone to that? Obviously, a lot of work going into Jordan. I wonder if you can compare where he is at this point to Jordan at the same point. And then, one question. On the point guard minutes, are you looking at basically like 40 minutes that's going to be split between Josiah and Lamonte in some way? No, I don't. Right now, uh, well, I can tell you, uh, Josiah all summer spend his entire time learning that position because it's the most demanding position that we have on our team to learn what we want from that position. And he, I thought he made great strides with it. Uh, you know, Lamonte, this summer, you know, we were making sure that he got healthy. And uh, then, you know, Josiah's had to deal with some uh, a growing injury here that the last, you know, couple of weeks that where he hasn't been out there. But to answer your question about feel, he has great feel. Answer your question about the minutes. Uh, I like to think that uh, whoever those guys, uh, I want to move them around because I don't want any one guy to get locked in because I think de defenses can can really game plan for them and how it breaks down uh, minutes wise, who's there the most of all. I don't know how that's going to be. I, I really don't, but I know that we're counting on the, both of those guys to play a lot of minutes and. Uh, I think they're going to really complement each other. I'd like to hope that even our third, if you want to talk about our third perimeter guy out there, I'd like to even think that he's capable of running a point at times. So uh, I think the more you can move players around, I think it makes them more effective. And uh, I like the versatility that I'm, I really believe because if you're at practice today, you're going to see Jordan Bowden uh, playing the point against Lamonte Turner because Josiah won't practice today. and. I think that benefits uh, Jordan Bowden probably as much as anybody. And uh, so the way the minutes will, in terms of point this, that, I'm not, I'm not sure how that's going to play out. Lewis and Wes and Gene. Uh, with, with the rule adjustments this summer, three point line coming back, that shot clock resetting, uh, does that change the way you guys prepare at all? Do you take that into account when you're practicing? Well, uh, you know, it's back, and, and, and obviously we're going to play back off that line. It extends our defense another what foot or whatever it is, uh, you know, because we normally normally play with our heels on that line defensively, offensively. We want to we want to use that line as uh, our, for our spacing, obviously, and so it does open up the court a little bit more. One thing we worked on really hard, we continue to work on, is that corner shot so guys don't step out of bounds because it is back there. It's not back as far as the NBA line, but it's, it's there. And I think you'll see that a lot early in the year in college basketball, guys running and, and back at, in that corner area, stepping out of bounds a little, a little bit. I don't think I've seen it affect uh, shooting that much. I think nationally it will, if you go by the what's happened in the past, the national average, average will probably go down just a little bit, and, uh, but it'll come back up and be better than where it was. The players do a great job of adjusting with that. But I do, again, I was in favor of that rule. And the uh, only thing that 
I really wish uh, that we could figure out a way not to have the different lines on the floor. I think it's difficult. I think it's probably harder for the women because uh, wherever we go and practice on an NBA court, we seem to play off the NBA line, which in some ways it makes it even look more spacious out there. But uh, players seem to play off the line that's further back. And, uh, but that's something that we'll, you know, everybody will have to deal with for a while because there will be two lines on most courts. Wes and Gene. Yeah, I think everyone here has seen Jordan Down go on those little streaks sometimes for, for, for a couple of weeks there. He'll be a, a, a really big score. Do you think he knows just how much he's going to have to do that on a consistent basis for this team? And have you had those conversations with him? Well, he's had to, we've had a conversation with him for four years now. You know that where he where he knows that being consistent and and uh, and you'd like to think going into a senior year that but I, I but we don't want him to just put his whole mindset on scoring the basketball. You know we want him to be a, a complete player. We think that he can affect games on the defensive end. Uh, we we do want him in, to to understand he's going to be probably game plan for a little bit different this year than he has been in the past. I mean people did pay attention to him, but. Not to the extent that I think he'll get this year, so that's going to be really important. He's worked hard to get better. He's worked hard physically to improve his body, and he and he practices very hard every day. He always has. We'd like to see him become more vocal. We'd like to see him. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't want to use the term uh, "get out of his comfort zone" because I don't think he's afraid to do that from a physical standpoint. I think it's probably more of a mentality that we want him to get more aggressive mentally. In, in a lot of different areas, not just shooting the ball, but just in the way he, he does everything. And, uh, he, you know, he's such a wonderful person and, you know, everybody loves him. And, but uh, sometimes you've got to, you know, come outside that personality and, and uh, when, you're bet when you're between those lines. And I think that we all want to see him do that more consistently than, than what he has done. Gene and then Jimmy. Rick, um, as, as this thing goes long, do you feel good as you transition to a more guard heavy team? Uh, do you feel good about your, the guys that you have their ability to kind of create shots for, for themselves and for other people? Uh, and second part of the question, is, last year you had either Bowden or Lamonte as that first guard off the pitch. Where are you as far as like finding out who that guy's going to be or be guarding them? Yeah, I, I do have confidence in our team. I do. I mean, I like this group of guys, and I think that they, they are grasping. Uh, they're getting better right now. Uh, you know, yesterday was a day that, as a coaching staff, we tried to create havoc, uh, confusion, uh, chaos, uh, to see how they would respond, you know, quick. A lot of talking going on at one time just to create some confusion to see if we, how well we could uh, focus and stay grounded where we needed to be. And, and I thought for the first day that we really – tried to do that at a very high level. I thought the guys did a good job with it overall. In terms of the rotations, you know, uh, I could see that changing. Uh, you know, uh, Devontae Gaines broke his thumb, and he, you know, he's out right now. We'll, we'll be out for a couple more weeks, uh, get Josiah back. And uh, I do think that uh, Jalen Johnson is, is working hard to, to be able to be a person we can count on. but. You know, depending on uh, uh, how things work out with, uh, you know, Uroch will determine really how much we will be able to play e Ponds inside, outside, uh, to where we wanted to maybe get a little bit bigger. He's spent most of his time learning a new position this year, but uh, we know we can go back the other way if need be. But uh, we need Zach Kent. We, we, need, we need all these guys right now because we, we've watched the last couple of weeks with a couple of guys being out, you know, Drew Pember's been out a lot. Uh, he's been in practice the last couple of days, and you know what? He's he's shown the instincts that we saw when we were recruiting him. It's a whole new game for him, learning uh, how hard it is, uh, how physical it is, how demanding every possession is. Learning how to go from one play to the next play to the next play to the next play, and uh, the speed of the game. But uh, he shows. I mean, he just does some instinctive things that uh, that impress you. But he's going to have to be a guy, that, too, that learns uh, probably every position on the floor, except probably the point right now. So he's a guy that we could swing a couple different ways. And we do have good length. That's the one thing that you see in practice with our, our size out there, that 
deflecting more balls right now and because of the length of our, our front line guys and even our you know you, you look at it when Josiah's out there and, and uh, Devontae gets back out there and Drew that I mean, that's you know it's 610 6'6", 6'7", long wingspans and um, so it, that way it does change us a little bit but as we go, I think, uh, and I don't know when, I don't know what the timetable will be, but we'll somewhat settle into a rotation when we, when we get everybody back. It'll be based on performance. They'll, they'll, they will decide that. Our players will decide how we're going to end up playing and how we're going to, our rotations. They, they will decide that with how quickly they all understand the role that they need to play. Jimmy, we have a lot of prospects who said they want to go to Tennessee because they know they will be developed as a player at the maximum level. And I wonder if has that always been the case with players that you've got to recruit? Has that become more important prospects in recent years? No, Jimmy, it's always been the case. We've always believed in you know, our player development program, and, and I think a lot of schools do a good job with it, I'm sure. But it, it is of the utmost importance here. That's why you start with our strength and conditioning program. And, you know, uh, I've been blessed. Um, you know, Todd Wright was with me for 20 years. and. Now Garrett Maidenwall, who comes out of that same school and worked with Todd, and when I came here, there was no doubt that Garrett was the guy that was coming with us and what he does on a day-to-day -day basis. And then you get here, you know, you normally when you when you go into a new place, the your training staff is in place, and Chad Newman is one of the best that I've dealt with, and those two guys are really important in terms of your player development because you're asking guys to put a lot of time in, you're asking them to improve their bodies and extend their bodies and it's not just during the season because I do believe the old adage that you know players are made in the off season they continue to get better during the season but they're going to make those big strides in the off season so that part of it's really important for us and for them and, and then I think the work that the coaches do with them not only from a physical standpoint uh, you know working on you know every day their daily vitamins you know where they come in and work on the things that we want them to do at the at the very least we need to get those in every day and but also from the film work our assistants do with them to just to continue to teach them the, the mental side of it uh, I, I think that's been a at the end of last year one of the things that we talked about we've always felt like that we've put a lot of pride in our, our player development program but we talked about how can we take it to another level and we tried to do that in the off season and Pretty much with our coaches being able to spend as much time that, that they're allowed to, to to be with them, with our players. And uh, our players have embraced that. And um, so I, it, it's a, it really is a commitment from the entire staff and not just coaches. And the players have to do their part. And then obviously, uh, again, I can't emphasize enough what it means to have, we have a great medical staff here, what they do, and, um, and then um, what Chad and, and Garrett what they do every day, and uh, Lauren, our dietitian, what she does. I mean, our guys love it. I mean, you, you would if you would come over after practice one day and go down to the locker room and see her there and how much pride she takes in doing her job and what Mary Carter does to make sure that everything's in place from her end. It's just it's a staff commitment, and uh, because we do believe in putting our players first, we think we're here to to help them grow in every area, every facet that we can to help them grow and. And uh, but that's really what makes the fun, the job fun, to see these guys get better. It really, because the better they get, the better we're going to be as a team. That's all the time we got. Thank you, Coach. Okay. Thank you, Player, guys. Uh, availability begins at 1:45 over at Pratt.